Today we start directly in Visual Studio, because I want to show you how to upload files in Blazor web applications. Let's start by building the template for the component. We can use the built-in input file component. It wraps an HTML input element with the type file and allows for single or multiple file selection. We want to react to the user selecting one or more files. When we want to have multiple files, we need to add the multiple attribute to the input file component. Later more about that, let's stick with a single file for now. Next, I want to add an event handler to the onChange event of the input file component. We add a method to the code section of the Blazor component and define a single parameter of type input field change events args. The method parameter has only two properties. File contains information about the selected file and file count has the number of selected files in case we allow multiple files. When we want to get multiple files, we need to use the get multiple files method. For now, we keep it simple and only allow a single file to be uploaded and therefore only consume a single file using the file property of the input file change event args type. First of all, we check if we have a reference to an iBrowser file from the file property. Next, we can access a few properties containing information about the selected file. I add a few properties to store the information contained in the size, content type, name and last modified properties. Next, we want to actually read the file content. We use the open reads tree method and put the code in a try catch to handle IO exceptions. By default, we can only upload files up to 512 kilobytes. If we want to change the limit, we need to provide the max file size as an argument to the open reads tree method. In your application, you probably want to store the uploaded file on the cloud or call an API. I will, however, save the file to the local disk. First, I create a file in the temp directory using the static get temp file name method on the path type. Next, I get the extension from the original file name and create the target file path using the extension. I use the static get extension and change extension methods on the path type. Now, I open a new file stream and provide the target file path as an argument. Next, I use the copy to async method to copy the content of the selected file to the local file and close the target stream. I also add an error message property that I output on the screen as a trivial error handling. In case of an exception, I assign the exception message to that error message property. Now, let's finally run the application and upload the file. First, we select the file using the file picker in the browser. As soon as we select the file, the onChange handler will be executed and the file will be stored on the server. In my case, it's a temp folder on my computer. As you can see, when I upload a text file or an image, it will be stored using the correct file extension. And I can also open the files. The page also shows the original file name, the file size, its type and the last modified date as additional information. You'll probably use the information internally in your application instead of displaying it on the web app. However, you might want to confirm the user that the file has been uploaded successfully. Back in Visual Studio, we want to improve our code to handle multiple files instead of one. First of all, we add the multiple attribute to the input file component. As mentioned before, it will add the multiple attribute to the rendered HTML input element, allowing multiple files to be uploaded. Next, we need to change the handler method to consider multiple files. Instead of accessing the file property, we use the getMultipleFiles method to get a list of iBrowser file objects. We then use a for each statement and execute the rest of the code. Of course, the file information on the screen will now only show the data from the last processed file. Let's start the application again and try to upload multiple files in one go. We select three different files, upload them and within a short period we see them in the temp folder on my local disk.
When working with user content such as uploading files, be aware of security best practices and watch out for any mistakes. You should always check the file format, do not use the original file name and limit the file upload sizes. Also make sure to check the content for viruses or other unsafe content. I have a link to the file upload best practices cheat sheet of OWASP in the video description. This example demonstrates how to upload files in Blazor server where your code is executed on the server. If you're running on WebAssembly, you cannot directly access the server from your client code. In case you want to call an API or store your files in the cloud, you can also do that directly from inside the client project. You call the API like you would call a service to load data from a regular Blazor backend project. However, if you want to store the uploaded files on the server, you have to build a backend service and use an API client to connect to the server and provide the uploaded files. The best part about Blazor and file uploads is that no matter if you use Blazor server or Blazor WebAssembly, you can always use the input file component in both cases. And you can also use the same implementation of the onChange handler to upload the files to your local disk to an API call or anywhere else in the cloud. Just make sure to understand where your code will be running. Let me know in the comments if I should also record a video where I show the same example using Blazor WebAssembly instead of Blazor Server. File uploading is a common task and Blazor makes it simple using the built-in input file component to do it for Blazor applications. We can handle a single or multiple files at the same time. No matter what, we can use the same code for running on Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor Server. Have you tried file uploading with Blazor before? Let me know in the comments about your issues or questions you might have. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel for more regular videos about .NET development in the future. And I'll see you in the next video.